So hi there, um, and welcome to the, this Ed webinar, uh, which is an in-depth look at the template library. So uh, I'm Adam, and I am one of the uh, content designers here uh, who are at Ed. So um, in this webinar, I'm just going to have you just show you uh, an overview of the template library, what templates do, and how you can apply them in lessons. So before I actually show you templates in action, the template library, uh, I'm just going to give you a quick overview of the types of template we have available. So in a lesson, um, learners go through their micro lessons, which you configure with your own custom content. And when going through this lesson, each learner, they progress through one slide, then they move on to the next slide. And to complete the lesson, they go through every slide in the lesson. So you can configure what slides do, how they work, by applying templates to each individual slide. So, for example, you can construct a lesson with knowledge transfer at the start uh, and then reinforce this knowledge transfer learning with some interactive templates. So knowledge transfer, as I just mentioned, is a type of template which you use to, to educate on a specific concept. For example, uh, you can use uh, the text and images template that we have. I'll show you in a second. Uh, and what that will do is allow you to just put a little, a little bit of text about whatever your uh, concept you're trying to educate on and then uh, reinforce it with some imagery. But you also are able to use video templates. And once we get to the library, you'll see, and I'll explain which area, the knowledge transfer templates are contained. But these are typically used at the start of a lesson, uh, two or three uh, knowledge transfer templates are used to um, conduct some, some learning. So and then in a lesson, and again, a lesson can be whatever you choose. This is just a standard lesson. You could then go on to use some interactive templates. Uh, and what these would do uh, is reinforce some of the learning that was conducted during the knowledge transfer. So these can be a classic multiple choice. You can use chat to reinforce uh, some competencies you might have just educated on in the knowledge transfer. Uh, and we'll just go over quite a few examples of interactive templates and, and different way they can be used within the webinar. And finally, uh, we have game templates. And much like the interactive templates, they are used to, to reinforce the, the key concepts that, you, uh, that your learners take in during knowledge transfer or perhaps during uh, interactive templates. So with that short overview, we're just going to go straight into looking at a lesson here. So I've, I've set something up already, which is custom branded uh, to Apple. So in this example, we're, we're going to create a lesson or just do some slides uh, based around the theme of product training for the MacBook. But you can construct a lesson on absolutely any topic and educate on any skills which you would like to do. So as I mentioned, we are going to start on the text and images template, and that's what we have here. So this is the first slide of the lesson. You can see here, slide one, text and images. You can just see the, the text and images here on, on the right in the uh, content navigation bar. So this is exactly how a text and images template will display, be configured when you first apply it to your lesson. And you can see it's filled with some dummy content here, just to show you how, uh, potentially how it could be used, what it will look like when it's configured. But we're going we're gonna to change it up. So since this is about the MacBook, we're going to say about uh, and this is the first slide of our lesson, so I'm going to use this bit of knowledge transfer just to educate our learners on what the lesson will be about. So we're going to say here, uh, let's see, and let's upload an image as part of this, and I, I've I've got some some uh, imagery ready here and what this will do th this template is great because you can introduce lots of text and then break it up with images because it, as is, it's kind of on the theme of micro lessons you you want to uh, deliver information in bite-sized chunks and you don't want to have a long form piece of text uh, when you're conducting knowledge transfer so it's nice to break up all these paragraphs with little bits of imagery and that's what this template allows you to do so we've introduced the topic of the lesson. We're then going to move on to say uh, the key features of the MacBook. Uh, to uh, 
And this is just an example of how the template can work, but typically uh, you would get a lot of knowledge transfer, a lot of text about the MacBook, for example, could be put into here. So that's a, a quick introduction to the text and images template, but now I'm going to add another template to this lesson. So to do that, I'm going to click to add a new slide. And what this will do is open the template library. And uh, it's going to make me select a template to apply to that slide because you, you have to have you have to apply to a, temp a template to a slide. The slides just can't exist without templates. So I'm adding a slide and I'm going to go to select a template. So we'll stay in the content tab up here at the moment. And this is where all the, the knowledge transfer templates are located. This is where you're you're really just putting in your learning content that the learners, you know, they, they still interact with it. It's still, it's not just like a plain text, for example, you can add the, the image collection template, which I've just selected here as an example, and you can detail uh, different images and then the learner taps. And here they've got a little bit more text, which you actually configure over here. Um, so for example, let's say um, the, the first image here, we've got some accessories that might come with the MacBook. And here we would just have little images so that the learner you know, that associates those things. For example, let's say the first one was the Apple mouse. Uh, then we have, And there we have the, the start of the template, but I'm going to, I'm going to show actually uh, the YouTube video template, because I think that would be a great addition to this, this lesson. So actually I'm going to change the slide that I'm on here. So what, if you want to just, uh, sorry, change the template that you have applied to this slide, you don't have to get rid of it, add a new slide. All you do is press the cog over here in the content navigation bar and you see it says change template there. So we just click that and we open up the template library to select a different template to apply to the slide. So I'm going to scroll down through the, the uh, knowledge transfer templates you have over here and go down to the YouTube video template. And when you select that, it, we, we've got a default video in here, which is uh, about Ed, but we're not, we're not going to be teaching them about Ed. We want to talk about the MacBook. So to change the video which is used, uh, which is displayed to the learners in the lesson, we simply go to YouTube and I've, I've got the MacBook video. Um, ready here and all you do is take this little part of the link after the, the equal sign and there, there's some text down here which can also show you how to get this piece of the link if you need um, some reminding after the webinar but anyway just to show you you can just copy that and then paste it right in here and that video is ready to use in your lesson so this is a great example of a video which details key features of the product, but say you wanted to teach about some competencies, perhaps it's um, great, absolutely crack. This is, let's see if there's a good video. So here we are, we've got a lovely gentleman here ready to teach us about how to upsell. So this could be used straight away in your lesson and just the exact same as the, the previous map video. If you, if you like what the, this guy's got to say, you copy in the bit after the equal sign and you can paste it in there and it's ready for you to teach the sales skills. But we're, we're going to keep this one about the MacBook. And uh, in a number of templates, you have uh, configurable options just to, to change slightly how the, the template works um, you know, in, in small ways. So in this one, you can let the video automatically play. So as soon as the learner arrives on the slide, they're straight into watching the video. So we're going to do that because that's I, I like that feature. That's you know, it, there's, there's no uh, breaks in the lesson. They, they're continuing through. So uh, let's add another piece of knowledge transfer to this lesson. Um, I'm going to I'm going to go with the uh, the expandable list. I really like that template. So what this means is you can you can have a list of key bullet points and then the learner just taps to get more information about each one. So let's just configure this one to be like the MacBook. And up here at the top, we've just got the title of the template that explains what's going on here. So let's say about the
Okay, we're teaching about the key selling messages, and let's go into these in detail. So, uh, it's got a good battery life. And as you can see on the left there, it's updating immediately as I type uh, into the content boxes here. So I know exactly how this lesson will appear to my learners as I'm creating the lesson. Uh, perfect, and we'll just do another one here. Uh, okay, and I just removed that last section. Just I don't, uh, let's say in this example, these are the key setting messages to the MacBook, and you know I can add more section if I like, if I want to educate on another couple of pieces of information. But in this scenario, I'm just going to get rid of those last two. And just like in the YouTube template, we've actually got another, a little configuration option here. And what this will do, if you turn it on, it just means that you can only have one open at a time. It's, it focuses the learner on that concept that they've just opened, which, which I quite like. So let's see. OK, let's do another image gallery one. This is, this is a great template. So I'm not going to add any images to this. I'm going to show you how to do it. Uh, if you, if you don't want to use images, if you don't have them to hand, you just want to get them in. Of course, you can add images at any time, just upload like we saw in the text and images template. But uh, this one's great because you can introduce another way of interacting with the lesson. So you're not just giving text for them to scroll next, scroll next, like a, a, you know you would normally interact with on a, your uh, mobile device, you swipe to get more content, let me just show you. You swipe through, you see more images, you see a piece of text with the image, but you can actually, let's say, if we were doing the same message we just had about the key setting messages. So, And we're ready to start configuring it. So slide two, we're going to talk about part two of this template. We're going to talk about the battery life. And get rid of that image. And third one, just like this last, uh, the uh, weight, wasn't it? And there we have the template configured and ready to go. So that's just another example of how you can, you know, there are various ways to, to conduct knowledge transfer and it's great to use a variety when you're constructing your lessons to keep things nice and interesting for your learners. But you can see we've added four slides here which you could use uh, to you do your knowledge transfer if you like, or you can combine them. Uh, it's up to you, that's, that's what the template library is about. There's, there's a huge amount of ways you can use these templates and you're never restricted. And so there we go. So I'm gonna move on to looking at some ways to reinforce this learning through interactive templates. Um, let's start with the numbers. So just like in the, the, the knowledge transfer section, uh, we've, we've got a load of interactive templates under lots of different categories. So content templates, that's where all the knowledge transfer templates are. And we've got multiple choice, numbers, relationships, and concepts. So these are your interactive templates. And game is appropriately the game templates. Anyway, so the number templates, the number interactive templates. We're just going to use these to reinforce the message about the, uh, the, the battery life. OK, battery life. So how long? So again, we're reinforcing the key setting message we identified in the knowledge transfer, nine hours. And this is what we want to, to really repeat and drill, drill into the, the heads of the learners who are experiencing this lesson and making remember nine hours, all day battery life. So let's, let's get cracking on that. Um, in this template, we've got the dial template and you can just uh, configure the dial to select what number you want. 
So the first configuration we, option we've got here, the minimum and maximum values. So the correct answer is nine. Um, I'm gonna say that we start at, let's say three hours, because no learner is gonna come through and think, yeah, it's, it's your naught hour battery life. That's, that's not how notebooks work. And the maximum value, we'll call it 12. So here we just, just made it a bit more applicable and, and you can change this to any value you like. For example, let's say you're talking about really big numbers. Well, then you can set that to uh, a giant value. I can ask for three or 1,200 hours, but we're gonna stick to the three and 12. So uh, you can also add a prefix and suffix to any of these numbers. So right now it's just three, four, uh, it's four hours we want obviously, but I can just show you here. Let's say we wanted to make this a question about dollars well now it's uh, we can have a four dollar you know what's the price of the product or uh, stuff like that and uh, just in the same way we can make it a percentage based question perhaps what's the maximum discount you can offer um, stuff like that but anyway we're gonna get this hours and there straight away you know we, we've done three different examples of how this number template can ask about different types of number um, here we've got an increment so what this means is that I can change uh, the increment of gaps between the numbers. So see here, it goes to say three hours, four hours, five hours, six hours. Instead, what I can do is make the increment three. So then it goes from three to six to nine to 12. Uh, and I like trying to keep the number of possible answers to a question, a number question particularly, to a minimum. So if I'd left the increment as one, then there's three, twelve, there's nine different potential answers the learner can have for this less, but for this interactive question. And I, I don't want to give them too much. They, they, I don't want them to be guessing from one in nine answers. Half of the, you know, the point of giving them an interactive question isn't just to test them, it's to reinforce the concept. So when they see it's either three, six or nine, that's hopefully going to help um, refresh their mind. Oh yeah, yeah, it was nine. That's one of the options. So labels, we can also increase or decrease the amount of labels available. So just changing the increment back to one. So I can show you an example where potentially there's more labels. Let's say uh, I want nine labels. So it's going to label every single button on the dial here, but we're going to bring it back down to four increment three. And there we go. On decimals, what this will mean is how many decimal places you want to display. For example, if you had a price, uh, you can put two decimal places and then you can uh, drill down to a smaller number than just uh, integers. Uh, and here, so this might be the, the first time you've seen the answer section of interactive templates, but this is this area, the answer area, is consistent across all interactive templates. And what this does is well, I'll show you the pop-up that appears once you answer a question. So say here, I, uh, I'm a learner, I've come into this template, and I think that MacBook's battery life is six hours. So I press OK, and oops, I forgot to <laughs> configure the correct answer as nine. There we are. Okay, so the correct value is nine. Brilliant. Anyway, it's telling me, no, it's 10 hours. because I let's, let's just reset that so we can show you it working. Okay, so I go to nine hours. Boom, it tells me no, it's nine hours, and it just says not quite here. So it automatically reinforces the learner as to, you know, they got it wrong, check it out, it was nine hours. And then you get a piece of text here, which you can use to reinforce the key message, the learner that you want to get across. So I like to use it just to make sure that they're aware. Uh, if they get it wrong, no, yeah, the... Uh, and then you can add another piece of text, you, you've reinforced them the correct answer and then you tell them why this is important. So, Okay, and you can see down here we've got a core message displaying. So this, whatever you type in the core message area, it just displays in larger text at the very bottom. So perhaps you've got quite a lot of text you want to display in the takeaway here and you need to just reiterate once again that last point, core message, nine hour battery life. And that's that takeaway setup. So uh, another couple of things you can configure, again, this is on every template. So 
for example, you can see down here the uh, the uh, prompt we have that displays. So when a learner gets to the slide, it's just supposed to be uh, to tell them how they're supposed to interact with this template. Perhaps they haven't seen it before, or they need a refresher. And it says here, drag to select the current value, drag to select the current value. So let's set uh, it. Typically, you, you really would rarely need to change the prompt. Um, it's, it's, but we let you do it if you'd like. And also, you can set a star reward. So what that means is that, uh, let's say this question, I just put a two in there. And you can see a little pop-up that it displays at the top of the template there. I'll just change it so we can see it again. Here we are, one star available. So what that means is that when the learner, they go through this uh, lesson in the app and they answer the question, if they get it correct, then they're rewarded with the amount of stars that you display down here. Uh, and that's just some immediate gamification that you can apply to, to any interactive template that you configure. And that makes it a lot more real and, and uh, it engages the learners because you know if they get that question wrong, they're not gonna get the star. They, they wanna try, they wanna think, they wanna remember, oh, oh yeah, it was nine hours. So that's what we're going for there. So let's have a look at a different number template that we can configure. I'm gonna show you the ratio template because that's, that's one of my favorites. Uh, here we go. So the ratio template. Uh, the, the great thing about this template is that you can ask what ratio uh, numbers are to each other. So for example, just in this, again, the dummy content here, we're saying what ratio of milk to water. And then as, as I drag the bar, say up here, you can see down at the bottom, I'm, I'm pointing with my fingers there, but you can see down at the bottom here that uh, the number scales, it changes with how you configure it at the top. Um, it's great for when you want to ask a ratio question, but in this one, I just want to ask about the battery life of the MacBook. So I'm just going to remove that one, and uh, we're ready to just configure this as a sort of a dial, a slider we've got over here. So just like before, let's say how and. So let's see, and it's nine. So the total value, what this just means is that this is the maximum number that the bar can go to. So you can see here it's 30. Well, I'm just gonna change that to 12, same as the last one. And we've got the increment still set to 10. So let's bring that to three again, just like before. And it's not nine milliliters, hours, there we go. So. We've got that and we press OK, there we go. So that's that template configured. Uh, and just like I was showing you in the, the interactive, sorry, in the knowledge transfer templates that we were looking at, there are a number of ways you can uh, display your content to your learners in the way that you see fit. And just like in the previous template, we can configure a takeaway here uh, that will display when they answer the question. Okay, perfect. Oh, in fact, I'm just going to show you um, another great use of the ratio template. So we've seen the bars scaling together, but you can actually turn that off. That's one of the configuration options we have here, allow bars to move freely. And that lets you ask uh, a variety of number questions in the same slide. So let's say the question was, uh, what are the, what are the dimensions of the Okay. So we can have, for example, width and height. And let's just do width and height, measured in centimeters, increment one. OK, and there we go. So for example, here we're saying the width is nine centimeters. And uh, off the top of my head, let's say it's 12. and 12, 9, and there we go. So that's that's another really good use of the, the ratio template if you want to ask uh, a multiple set of number questions on one uh, slide. So we're going to look at uh, one more number template. And this one is going to use the slider for this example. And, and it's very similar to the dial template. We can do the exact same. So uh, what is the 
Um, let's see, three. Maximum value was 12. Three. So you can see, you know, once you've mastered a couple of the templates, it's it's completely transferable skills. You'll uh, you'll be able to, you know, configure anything once you've got the hang of one. Um, the answer is nine, and that's 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 the template configured. That's the exact same configuration options we have there. Um, so uh, I'm now going to take a look at some concept templates. And uh, these are great for reinforcing specific, perhaps, uh, scripts, uh, the keywords in the script. So let's say in the missing word template, which we'll look at, uh, you can say, drag in the words that are most important. So uh, in the MacBook, it has an all day battery life. That's, that's the, the key message that we're going for here. So MacBook has an Okay, so I'm just going to get rid of the, the default missing words that we have here. And the key message that we have to put in all day. Uh, and here it's just about making sure they remember all day, nine hours, all day, nine hours, reinforcing that message. Uh, but we can also do a couple of cool things like adding in uh, imposter words. So let's say uh, eight. Okay, so now they have to also, not only are they reinforcing, dragging the right one, they're also thinking, is it eight or nine? It's about reinforcing that concept again. And let's say, um, okay. So we would hope they wouldn't say it has an okay battery life of eight hours. No, it's an all day battery life of nine hours. And that's, that's how the missing word template can be configured. And there's also a really great use of the templates, which you can do, where you're effectively um, configuring a true or false style question. So let's say, hmm, how's an all-day battery life? Has, well, the MacBook has an all-day battery life for nine hours. So for example, if the learner arrived on this slide, they would have to decide which uh, which set of words correctly fills the gap. So if they think it hasn't got an all day battery life of nine hours, then that's what they would have to drag in. And it's about reversing the meaning of the sentence with the words that you decide to make go missing. Uh, and this is where I like to just change the form. This is one of the rare cases where you want to. So you're telling them to drag in the correct words, like which one is the one that makes the sentence the, the true correct answer. So we can actually um, do a similar style of uh, reinforcement on the strikeout template. Uh, and this one's a really great one to include in your lesson because it has the, the drawing mechanic, which is a lot of fun. So uh, I'm simulating the drag with the, the finger touch there. And what the learner has to do is cross out the incorrect sentence, the incorrect words to, to make it correct. So let's say we're presenting them with a wrong script. So the first thing to do when you're configuring this template, put in the correct statement at the top up here in the title field, and then we're gonna make some incorrect answers that display. So the MacBook has an all day battery life for nine hours. Let's say, uh, let's get rid of nine. I'm gonna replace it with four. Okay, so just like before they arrive in this template, they have to think, which one's the right one? Hold on, four doesn't look right. Cross it out, they've got the right answer. And just like in any other interactive template, you can configure the answer text here. Perfect. So that's an example of a couple of, of concept templates that we have available. Yeah, we're happy with that. So let's move on to showing multiple choice. Now this this is like the, the bread and butter. So I'll I'll, I'll show um, the multiple choice template first because this is the question everyone knows how to do. It's uh it's brilliant. So first thing we can do is a true or false style question, and that's completely simple. Let's say let's reinforce the uh, the weight now.
Okay, and just like we've configured the title, the, the default content in this case, that's, that's already perfect for us. You can see here that the correct uh, checkbox is selected for the, the true column here. So if I wanted to say it was false, let's say, just put it isn't, then there we go. All I've done here is checked false is the correct answer. So if they select false, they get told they're correct. Um, and something that I like to actually turn off it just for this um, style question, the true or false is randomize. So what that just means is that true is always at the top, false is always at the bottom because it randomize, it shuffles the order of answers so that if a learner is repeating a lesson, they can't just you know, remember the place of the correct answer. It's, it changes every time, which is, is great for making sure they're properly engaged in the lesson. Anyway, we're going to turn it off for this one. Um, so let's show off a couple of other things it can do. Let's say we're asking about what are the MacBook's key setting messages. So we know from making the lesson that it is the battery life. And we're going to say that one's true. And it's uh, lightweight. And let's say uh, it comes And let's have one more incorrect. Um, so what we can do here is tell the learner they need they need to select two answers. And as you can see here in the number of selectable answers uh, section, we've only got one at the moment, so I'm just going to bump that up to two. And now they can select up to two answers here. So again, we want them to select weight in the battery life. Um, and let's say, let's say that it did come through with Windows 10 in this example. What we can also do is have an all of the above. And in this example, if you wanted to turn on randomize, then uh, all of the above always stays at the bottom of the list. So you can do any kind of all of the above question you like. No worries. Uh, you don't have to worry about, oh, well, if it, will it be randomly at the top of the top of the list of answers? No, it's always at the bottom. So that's great. Uh, and let's do the final bit of flair that we can have in the uh, multiple choice question, which is actually adding some further gamification, even than giving some stars for the correct answer. What we can also do is set a time limit. So let's say they've got six seconds to answer the question. Once they've, they've read that, they've only got six seconds to decide what the correct answer is. And let's say if they're too slow, then they will be told, you know, they get it wrong. So what we're also going to do is take a look at the chat template. So this chat template is fantastic for <laughs> simulating in-call in uh, scenarios or real life sales questions. So for example, in the dummy content we have here, uh, the customer is asking which product is the cheapest. Well, let's make this one about MacBook. Um, so, um, Let's say in this one, we're not just um, trying to reinforce the key saying message, we're talking about how they should talk about it. So the real, the sales skills, not just the knowledge. So um, battery life, okay. That's, I'm configuring that as the correct answer, that's the incorrect. So we've got an incorrect answer, let's say, basically we're trying to reinforce here, don't be negative when you're talking about it. So here we have the sales guy here. What we're saying is you've got to be positive and energetic when you talk about the MacBook, which is how they, how they train the, 
the map of store employees. And let's just make sure they understand that in the answer text. Brilliant. Um, and this obviously, it doesn't have to just be for customer training. For example, it could be, let's say um, your team um, and let's say so you know, your team member asks a question, how should you respond as a leader? How should you interact with your team members in this scenario but uh you know for this one we're still we're talking about just as our example it's the, the sales skills so we'll say here what's your answer great and we'll add um Let's say we'll add a categorize just to round off the examples that we're, we're giving in multiple choice. So, um, what So what this template does is it just allows you to uh, make the learner decide from two categories what they think the answer to the, the question is. So, or what category it goes into. So in this example, I'm gonna say, Um, gosh, what is it? Um, let's call it, oh gosh. Uh, it, it's, it's something like that. This one's the correct answer. And then we'll have, oh, And what we're even doing here, actually, it's it's almost an example of another way you can ask a number-based question. But again, you you, know, you don't have to be restricted to using the number templates if you like. Here, I've I've been happy enough to say, well, you've got to categorize it into the correct definition one. The rest of the display is 1480, and and that's the that template configured. So we're just going to look at the final type of interactive templates, and we have the relationships templates over here. So this is all about how information pairs together, for example, uh, whether how a product, what its uh, features are compared to other products, what image is the, relates to what category, and uh, you can rank in order different things, for example. In fact, let, let's do a reorder template. Let's say uh, put in descending. Put in descending order of conversation priority, and perhaps there's a more elegant way of saying this, but in the moment, let's go with that. So, uh, descending order, so battery life, most important one. Um, wait. So, here again, we're almost reinforcing not just knowledge about the products, about how to talk about it, how to sell it, how they should discuss when a customer comes in, they want to sell the map book, you must talk about, oh, it's, it's randomly put in the right order for me first, but let's say here, okay, screen resolution now, we know that's the third most important, so there we go. And if they happen to get the question wrong, then Ed automatically puts in the right order and lets them know, no, we've got to do battery life weight screen resolution. Um, so I'm just gonna leave the answer text so we can move on to looking at the connect template, which is another uh, template which uses the, the draw mechanic that we had that uh, I was showing in the, the strikeout. So in this one, you just drag a line to pair each category. So we're going to use this to talk about uh, the dimensions, the dimensions of the MacBook. Okay, uh, let's see. It's around here. 
Um, screen size. And let's say And here again, they just connect up. So what we've got here on the left and the right, you just have the different columns which match each other. So weight matches to the screen size, which is that, and battery life nine hours. And perfect, that's that. The key selling points of the MacBook reinforce in this template. So uh, to round out the lesson, we're gonna move on to looking at the final type of template, which is the game template. Uh, game templates, I should say. So when you're looking at game templates, there's there's a number available to you and there's so many different ways that they can be used. It's really a great idea to just get uh, stuck into building a lesson and, and add the ones that you would like to use for your content, see which ones fit the most. Uh, I'm particularly fond of the image word match one. It's great uh, where you can just try and reinforce again and again. So for example, we were talking in the beginning about uh, showing images of which products uh, come with the MacBook. So you can say, uh, name, tap the name of the product which uh, comes through with the MacBook or doesn't come free. So this is the dummy content, for example. You've got Apple Mouse here, click, and it reinforces over and over again, oh, it's not the Apple Mouse, it was the, the uh, keyboard. Um, and that's uh, would be a great use of this template. But in this example, I'm going to use the, the true or false game template because this one, it, it really is the quickest one to configure uh, and the simplest. So in this game, all you need to do is swipe correct statements to the right or incorrect statements to the left. So uh, you get the, the, the learner gets presented with a statement, which is configured in the statements column over here. And you can see that we've got the categories yes and no. Uh, so swipe left or incorrect and you see my score goes up in the top right corner up here and swipe right for correct and I'm, I'm getting some low points because I'm, I'm taking a lot of time to answer but if they actually answer more quickly then you see they get bonus points oh, I answered incorrectly there so I lost points anyway that that's the, the core of the game so we're just gonna configure that much in the same way as we configured all of the other templates here so let's name the game switch these statements. Okay, so we're gonna uh, go one step further than what we've got here. So uh, by default, and this is a great use of the template, what you can do is swipe true statements to the right, false statements to the left. So say we can put in a true statement here, MacBook has a nine hour, has a nine hour battery life, and that's great. So that would come up and the learner gets presented with a number of statements that you've configured. For example, say it has an eight hour battery life, you could put that in and then that reinforces true, nine hours true, nine hours true, all day battery life. And that's what you really want repeated into their, into their heads. So what we're actually gonna do for this one though, is change the template. So it's not just sorting true statements and false statements. We're, we're talking about uh, you swipe features of the MacBook to the right and not features of the MacBook to the left. So let's see, correct. Uh, And what I'm doing here is configuring the types of cat. The I'll, I'll show you in a second. Uh, not a feature. Okay. So as you can see here, the the, the categories I guess which you're swiping into on each side, they've they've changed as I've typed in here. So feature of the MacBook. Yes, that's a feature of the MacBook. No, it's not a feature of the MacBook. Uh, and that's that's really changed the template. So just like any of the interactive templates we have available, the game templates are just as versatile and can be used in a variety of ways. So uh, I've just changed the time limit there to 15 seconds, just because I prefer shorter, tighter games that are, um, are more, uh, learners have to play over and over if they want to get the top score. So talking about motivating for top score, what we're gonna say is the learner can get, uh, has to get, can get five stars for this game, sorry. And to do that, we configure the all stars field. They have to get 15,000 points. So you saw in there, I got a couple of thousand points for answering correct and incorrect. Um, so we're gonna configure these star fields down here. I've changed the one star 
uh, field to 1,000 points. And what that will mean is that the learner only has to earn 1,000 points to get A star, but if they want all the stars, then they have to, you know, they have to try really hard. They have to get that 15,000 point uh, score, which means they'll be playing again and again to try and get it right. So now that I'm happy with that, I'm just going to let them know about the scores up here. So uh, let's see. And let's make sure that the description of the game matches my new use of it, that we're sorting features to left and right. Uh, which of these are... Which of these are features to the MacBook? Swipe. It's features to the right. <coughs> and uh, not features to the left. You know, I'm sure there's a much more eloquent way of, of, of putting this, but just as the example, we'll go with that. So the MacBook has a nine hour battery life, let's say. Whoops, sorry, we're, we're doing features here. So let's say a nine hour battery life. That's a feature. Um, a standard definitions. And just like in the, uh, the multiple cho choice template we had configured earlier, the correct button here just means that it goes to the right, to the correct side of the screen effectively. And because I haven't labeled this as a correct, and indeed it's not a correct feature of the MacBook, then that goes to the left. And if they want to earn points, then they have to correctly swipe it to the left. So standard definition screen, another feature through is the, uh, um, okay, and um, we'll I just add another statement here. It's great to have a lot of statements configured for your game so that even if they play again and again, maybe the, the learner will be presented with new statements to, to keep challenging them and keep them coming back to the game to try and earn all their starts. So, right, and there we have our, our game configured and ready to go. So, light is another Mac notebook. Yes, that's a feature of the MacBook. Comes free. No, it doesn't come with Windows 10. Yes, nine hour battery life. No standard definition screen. And then that's how the game would play out. So, that really rounds out uh, the lesson. Uh, I hope that was a good example of, of what we had in the template library. Um, if there aren't any questions, then uh, you can contact us at a later date uh, on the handle uh, microlearningedd on Twitter. Uh, we can also be emailed on hello at edapp.com. And we have a live chat window here, which you can contact, with us, uh, you can contact us on at any point of the day, and we'll respond to you. Uh, so thank you very much for coming to the webinar and um, I hope to see you again soon.